to deny the individual of human rights is to challenge his very humanity. With these noble and powerful words of Nelson Mandela, I, Shashank Mishra, Assistant Commandant ITBP, would like to present my views, negating the motion. Well, friends, there is no doubt that human rights are prerequisite for the dignified life of an individual. But when the human rights of a billion innocent civilians clash with those of a rogue-minded, brainwashed militant, I have no regrets in saying that rights and liberties of a militant be immediately seized. Or I would like to ask you all, had you been given a choice between human rights of 166 innocent civilians versus those of Kasab, whom would you choose? I don't think probably any one of you is too sympathetic to Kasab. Whether we agree or not, we are internally turbulent from east to west and north to south. Somewhere it is the state-sponsored terrorism spreading wings across the territory of the state, or at other places it is the insurgents and the secessionist elements trying to fragment and destabilize the country. And as it has been said, in the times of war, the law falls silent. But even in the times of war, we have kept our sanity intact and follow the highest decorums of law and justice. But I would like to appeal from this platform that to anyone concerned that if your life means my nation's death, it is better you die or we are there to take care of you. In the global times, when violence and fundamentalism is on an unprecedented rise all across the world, why would you like to tie the hands of our security forces and throw them in the battlefield? Are we not aware of how China handled the protests at Tiananmen Square, or how China handles protests in the Xinjiang province, or how Sri Lanka eliminated LTTE? Friends, the memories of 9-11 attacks are still vivid in the minds of all of us. But what is more pertinent is what the measures taken by United States, both domestically as well as abroad, beyond its territories, to eliminate the, eliminate the menace of so-called global terrorism. It even went up to the extent of destroying and geopartizing the stability of countries like Afghanistan, Syrac, Syria and Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, we are nowhere close to such methods of counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency. And let me tell you, no international framework or human rights agency could oppose the steps taken by United States because national security has to be weighed above all other considerations and in the international diplomatic arena it is the strength of a nation which is respected and not the good manners howsoever morally strong you may be but if you are not strong and resilient you are no better than a beggar and beggars don't have any choices in the international diplomatic arena my friends I have no regrets in saying that I firmly believe in the dictum of Sathe Satyam Samachare the one who is evil must be handled with the similar yardstick you all are well versed with the Indian Constitution. Does the Constitution not place reasonable restrictions upon the, upon the rights and liberties of individuals for the sake of national sovereignty and integrity? It does, and it rightly does. My friend speaking in favor of the motion would likely argue about justice, liberty, equality, fraternity. But I would like to ask them how to handle and counter those who are trying to subvert the very Constitution and the very state, and that too by violent means, by flowers or by persuasion. I can assure you, you won't be able to. And if you believe that you will be able to, I can assure you, you haven't seen the ground reality. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not as if we don't value human rights or we don't value the human life and dignity. We have been protecting human rights and human life since 1948 when the so-called Kabailis attacked, looted and raped Kashmir in 1948 or till in the recent times when we were the first responders to the crisis in floods. But when the same misguided Kashmiri youth attack and heckle the security forces who are there to protect them, I get bit jittery, ladies and gentlemen. And when they become a human fence to facilitate the escape of a terrorist, I, get, I doubt the existing edifice of human rights. The foreign funded NGOs would make hue and cry about the human rights and the utopian and the nobility. nobility. But I would like to ask them, why do, why do they don't raise their voice when our brothers are martyred in JNK, Dantewada or for that matter the Northeast? Ladies and gentlemen, we come from a culture which has been tolerant and accommodative to all, even our invaders. But the same very culture has even taught us to behead those who are threat to your survival. Ladies and gentlemen, at last, I would only like to say that history is the biggest court in the world. People come and die, governments come and go, and decisions are taken and retaken. But it is the posterity which remains behind, and history has never been on the side of those who are weak and resilient. History has always favored those who are powerful and victorious. And that is the reason that in the city which we are sitting, Delhi, there is a Baba Road and there is no Narana Sangha Road. Ladies and gentlemen, if any one of you has a question that how far and how long will we fight, I can assure you we will fight till we are victorious. Because in the words of Jeremy Bendam, we are secure to, we are here to secure maximum good of maximum number of people. Jai Hind.